Hi everybody, I'm Larry Larson. Welcome to our How to Make Stop Motion Puppet Armature show. What is a stop motion puppet armature? Well, I bet you know, but in case you don't, it's a little mechanical device that goes inside of a stop motion puppet and can be put in any position and it'll stay there. This is a medium sized kind of a jointed figure. Now, how does it work? Well, here's a, here's, a, here's a finished puppet, and you see he's got foam rubber skin on the outside of him. So any position that I put him in, he'll stay there. And that means that I can animate him one frame at a time. Click, take a picture, click, take a picture. Keep doing that and then run the pictures together and he moves. He appears to move and live. It's a lot of fun. One of the reasons I really want to do this show and the way I'm doing it is to make this affordable. I want to stress affordable. Yeah, you have to buy a drill press under 100 bucks at wholesale places. Some cutting tools, files, hacksaw, propane torch, some supplies. I'll, I'll put a list up of those things. I also want to talk about that these tools require your respect and they require knowledge to use them safely. A show of this scope can't possibly go into all of the details and procedures for safely operating a drill press or a propane torch or using a hacksaw. I'll give you a few tips, but you have to educate yourself on that. Uh, you do these procedures at your own risk, and so learn about the tools. That would be a whole other show, how to, how to safely operate a drill press. There are shows like that. You should get them. I did say I'd give you some safety tips, and I will give you a few. One is always wear protective eyewear when you're working with spinning tools. Another one is don't have any hanging uh, jewelry or long hair. I haven't had to worry about that for a long time. Or, um, or, or loose clothing. When you're operating a propane torch, uh, if you have a Bic lighter uh, around, if you smoke or whatever, um, put the Bic lighter somewhere far away because you don't want to accidentally hit it with the torch. Always, always clamp down your work pieces. When, you, when you're drilling something, clamp it down to the vise. I'll show you some ways I do that. Uh, always, when you're filing or, or hacksawing, uh, always put it in a, in a vise. Okay, um, this stuff is an awful lot of fun. I love doing this stuff, and I love sharing it with you. Now, the first thing you do when you're going to make a puppet is you plan it. So, uh, and you do that with drawings, but as opposed to me telling you all about it, let's take a look at some plans. These are the plans I drew uh, for this puppet. I started with a with a, with a, a drawing two sides. It's very important to do this to scale, as big as I want to make the puppet, and to plan front and side and see I've got the parallel lines so I know that the joints and the different features all land on the same level. And then I overlaid that with tracing paper and drew up the design. It's really important to have good front and side views. It's also important to have good tracing paper because you're lifting it up and you want thick enough stuff so it doesn't tear up. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is joint orientation. What I mean by that is the way the joints work with one another. Let's imagine, for instance, if I can separate this out here, that, that, this, that, that this joint here is this joint here, okay? Uh, this joint here is this joint, and this joint is this one. So you see, this is the way the leg would work. And uh, it, would, it would swivel this way, the way a leg does. And it would be able to come out this way. Uh, if that were in a different uh, plane, a uh, different direction, that wouldn't work. This, likewise, the knee goes, goes correctly there. But let's imagine that I had set it up like this. Okay, well, we do okay with the, with the joint going that way on the, on, on the hip, but not so well with the knee, you see. We can't get enough movement out of the knee. So the joint orientation, that's why the joints have to be, orientation is which way they're pointed, have to be pointed in the right direction. And always with these things, we're always, we're always battling uh, the weight of the armature versus the strength of the armature. Because at some point, the whole puppet will have to be supported by this joint here. When he takes a step forward, he's off balance and off balance position. So we have to keep as much lightness in here as we can. And that has a lot to do with the choice of materials. Um, most of, traditionally, most of the puppet uh, skeletons I've seen, or armatures I've seen, are made with standard steel. 
and uh, that steel you get at the hardware store, or you get flat stock. There's a little higher grade of steel you get from the tool supply places. Um, this this is this this part here. This represents rod, and those parts can be actually you can get, you can get welding rod that's very very high quality steel. You can get it either in stainless steel or in regular steel. Speaking of stainless, I like stainless steel because it doesn't rust. But uh, like I say, most people that I've seen uh, historically have built these things out of regular steel. And an aluminum alloy is often used, and it's a very specific alloy. It's 2024. It's aircraft aluminum, and it's a lot lighter than steel, and it's not as hard, but it's close. Uh, it works real well, and it's very light. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, 2024 aluminum, too. The thing about aluminum is you can't stick it together the same way you can stick steel together. These joints here will be done with silver soldering, which I'll show you silver soldering. You can do that with steel and stainless steel. You can do it with a lot of metals, but you can't do it with aluminum. Now, I also want to talk about uh, screw sizes. Okay, so here we have... Here we have the basic screw sizes, four basic screw sizes. There are others, of course, uh, smaller and larger. But these are really common in puppets. This is a 080 screw. It's very small. It's uh, I've got a pen in there for size comparison. You can use my finger, too. Um, so the 080 is very small. I've written down here it requires a 364 tap drill. That means when you want to thread a hole for that screw to screw into, you have to drill a hole with a 364 of an inch um, uh, drill. This is a 256, slightly larger, 256. That requires a number 50 tap drill. And that would be for a little larger piece of metal. This is the 440 uh, size screw. And we're going to be using this uh, mostly in, in this show. It's a very handy size. It fits a lot of, 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 of different configurations and uh, ball sizes and we have a lot of 3 8 inch balls and quarter inch balls so this is going to be a common size for for that and that requires a number 43 tap drill this is a 632 screw and it's larger and they go all the way up to they go way really big so these are just common sizes for puppet armatures number 36 size tap drill is required for that I want to talk a little bit about the heads on these screws. I want you to notice that this head is rounded and slotted. And there's a slot where you put a screwdriver in, and it's flat on the bottom. This is a good kind to use. So you don't want the kind that have the countersink set in because they don't sit flat on the, on the joint. You want this round head with the flat bottom. And the slots... Uh, an old system, but it's about it's a good system. Okay, this is a piece of steel, so I'm going to put this in the vise here. Get it in the vise, good and tight. And I've got my hacksaw. Remember, it only cuts going this way. So I'm going to put the pressure on. It only cuts going this way. I'm going to put the pressure on going that way, and lighten up when I come back this way. Okay, this is a file that's got a handle on it, and that's, that's better when you have a file with a handle on it. I want to clean off that wire edge from where I made the hacksaw cut. And you want to be careful handling it because it's sharp. See, I can feel where it is here. All right. Now, the same as the hacksaw blade, the file only cuts on the going away stroke. Okay, this is what I would call one of the core skills. Of, of making puppets. I'm going to pan back so you can see. This is my, this is a fire brick here. It's a perfectly dry brick that's made to take a lot of heat. This is my propane torch, my propane torch head. Okay, one of the first things you want to do is clean off the metal and you want to get it all shiny and bright so that there's clean metal for the silver solder to stick to it. doesn't want to stick to dirty metal or metal with oxidation on it. So you just clean it off with sandpaper, use a file, get it all clean and bright and shiny, 
and ready to receive that silver star. So let's come in close so we can see what's going on here. I'm going to put this flux on here and I'm going to protect the metal when I heat it up. So for, I'm going to heat the metal up and uh, and, the, and we're going to melt some silver solder on there. This is easy melt silver solder. So when we heat the metal up, the first thing that's going to happen is that the uh, water is going to boil out of the flux. Second thing that's going to happen is the glass is going to melt. And I'm going to put the silver on there. And the silver is going to, the metal is going to melt the silver. So I'm going to try to get both these pieces of metal just as hot. That's the water boiling away now. The water's boiling away. And we want to see the silver solder flow between the two pieces. And watch for that silver to flow. See that little dot of silver in front of the proof? To jump up on the hot metal any second now. See the beginning to flow between the two pieces of metal? There it goes. See it flow? You jump between the two pieces of metal and make a nice smooth bond there. Now this thing is hotter than blazes right now. So I can't touch it with my fingers if I want to avoid blisters. So I'm going to dunk it in some water. You won't see it, but you can hear it. That's the metal getting dunking in the water and being cooled off. So I'll turn this brick over to the cool side. And we'll put this down. We'll take a look at it. And you'll see that it's now cool enough to handle now that I've dunked it in the water. Don't touch it till you dunk it in the water. And that's a good joint because the metal flowed between the two and made that kind of, well, I would call it a wet shape, you know, between the two pieces of metal. And that means it's really joined together and I can't break that off of there. When you're done with your silver soldering, always take the torch head off the tank. first step in making the barbells is to drill a hole in the ball and drilling a hole in the ball is a pretty good trick. Uh, by the way this is this is one of the barbells this is what I'm referring to. So we get a closer look at all this stuff. I just wanted to show you I've got things clamped down to the drill press and we're ready to drill a hole in the ball. Put the ball in the vise. Now well, how do you put the ball in the vise? You have to make a couple of pieces of metal like this with holes drilled in them and the ball fits in the hole and like that you put the ball in the vise like that and you close the vise down on the ball. The next step is make sure that the, that the, that the thing is seated well in the, in the vise. Then we're going to file a flat spot off the top of the Okay, we got a little flat spot on there. Now for the next step, I'm going to center punch that flat spot. Okay, now I've got a little divot in the middle of the ball. I think you can see it there. Well, now we're going to take this little funny looking drill and it's a stiff drill. This is called a center drill. And we're going to further enhance that divot in the ball. Okay, so now with no lubricant again, I have my eighth inch drill ready to drill the hole. And here we go. There you see the hole in the ball we just drilled. So a little over halfway through, perfect hole for silver solder. So let's go put it on the rod with the silver solder. We're going to put flux in the ball and on the rod first. And here's our flux. Remember you want your flux to be creamy so that it covers it up and keeps the air away as you heat it up. And I'm going to put some, try to get some flux inside this ball here. I'm going to snip off a little tiny piece of silver solder and we'll 
I got the little piece of silver side of there. And now I got to get in the hole in the ball. We got the little silver solder inside the ball. I hope you could see that. There's a little tiny chip of silver solder in that ball. And that's what's going to stick it to the rod. So, uh, get on the rod. Okay. Now, uh, remember, that's a nice loose fit. So, the steam has a place to escape to. We don't want a real tight fit on that. You want a little clearance with your silver solder joints. Now, the first thing that's going to happen when I heat this up is that the flux is going to boil, water will leave the flux, and uh, then other things will happen. The, then the flux will melt, and then the silver solder will hopefully flow. Um, I'm going to hold this on top of the ball, and put this on top, so when the, when the flux boils, the ball won't fall off the top, won't boil right off the top of the thing. You know, a little more heat on, coming out of this torch. Let the see how fall. I can feel it pushing up as the, as the flux boils inside of that. I'm going to solder this ball without any cuts in the film so you can get a sense of how long the silver soldering process takes. It's going to be a little while. This is a 3 8 inch ball, so it'll take a while to get hot. But you'll see it getting red pretty soon. There it goes. Now it's to be done boiling. Now what we're expecting is that silver solder has melted inside of there and joined it together and that's about as hot as it's going to get. So, I think it's happened. We'll test it. But first we'll let it cool off, of course. It's just awfully hot. And we don't want to jar it while it's really hot, but we'll wait for it to at least stop being red, more or less, and then we'll cool it off. Listen, that's a lot of heat just went off in that in that water there. Let's see what we got here. Sure feels like it's on there. All right, I've been uh, playing with this. I've twisted this pretty good, and it's not coming off of there, so it's a good joint. We're going to make two double-ended sandwich joints.